Hello, welcome to my studio. My name is Elaine Weiner Reed, and I'm here in my basement studio where I create sculptures and paintings. My sculptures are made of wire, mesh, they're assemblage. Many times it's what I can find to balance and make it happen. My painting technique is similar in that I have an idea. Sometimes I start from sketches, sometimes just ideas and feelings and experiences that I've had. Overall, my, my work is to come out with a message of hope. Many of these paintings are done based on personal experience and trying to get the emotion out, work through things, try to figure things out as far as relationships go. That's a huge basis of my work, though I may have other sub-themes or um, outliers, I call them. As I promised in my introductory video, today we're going to work from what I have in this bag, which I took on a workshop. I don't know what paints are in here. There are hopefully some brushes so we can do some work. And we're going to work on this blank canvas. This is actually a canvas panel. Um, actually, Cheap Joe's panel. It has not really been prepped at all, but as you can see, there are pieces of plaster on it. So um, they come primed generally, but the plaster is because I actually had this under a base, one of the sculptures I was making um, in plaster and wire. So it's incidental, but it will factor into the painting. As I said before, there are no guarantees that you will see anything good, not probably approaching a near finished painting because we're gonna to try to do this in 10 to 15 minutes. What I wanna do each session is have you in the comfort and safety of your own homes, do what you wanna do. This art is for you. It should speak from inside of you, your voice and come out on paper or canvas with something you're trying to say or show or convey in your own way. No one else should or could be able to paint your voice, your vision. So with no further ado, um, have fun. I want you to try to overcome your fear. Don't worry about every time you step up to it, you have to deliver, you don't. All you have to do is create and make. Spend as many hours a week as you can. It's better if you tend to spend at least three to four hours a session because it takes time to re-enter the creativity zone. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's why I promise that it probably won't be good, but what I do want to show you is just one approach. It's not technique. Um, so let's have at it. I'm going to, I don't know how to pause this, so you're going to see parts of me. I'm going to be in and out of the thing. It is an amateur video, uh, full disclaimer. So I have paints in here, acrylics, and I luckily have a couple brushes. So I'm going to set them out on the chair I'm sitting on now, and I'm going to step up to the canvas. The only other thing I have out of view is a bucket of water, and my, my sink is over in the corner. So enjoy. I hope, pause it to get your stuff ready, and then let's just have a positive experience creating because from that, you'll, you'll carry that joy in creating with you through your day and even longer. It's, it's who I am, and I'm sure it's who you are as well. Enjoy, thank you. So I have a tube of white, so I have some blues, oranges, you name it. So I'm just going to put them on the chair and see what happens. Basically, I want to show you that although the paints are created by someone else, we'll start maybe, well, we'll see which one I grab. But you make your own. Luckily, I have a white and a black here, so I think we'll paint with these next time too, the same colors. Um, at some point, remind me and I can 
you know, email or post on my Instagram feed brushes. Um, some of the colors, I use Goldens, I use Liquitex, I use whatever is at hand. Sometimes when I run out, I've ordered from Amazon.com. So what I want to do, and I will try to stay out of the view, is to just put something on here. And the first thing I'm going to tell you, I don't know why I'm grabbing this, but I grabbed white first. So um, remember, no rules, just right, like the Outback. Um, painting, it, it, you will hear all kinds of rules. If you've studied before, you know all kinds of rules. Many people have asked me if I would try to teach um, set up classes. Well, we know for now, at least, everything is suspended class-wise. That's why I'm trying to do this. I call my approach abstracted realism or reality abstracted. So whatever your style, and at one point I'll show you a portrait I had started in oil and maybe even some oil painting I did back in the 80s where it was very uh, realistic. I was trying to get to, I love doing skin tones of all people of all colors. They're so rich and lush. Um, so I may try to start on another can canvas and show you from a sketch I did of my son to trying to abstract him, just a portrait of him on a canvas. But maybe I'll get better at this too, but let's do it. So nowhere does it say you need a palette, you need anything else. I'm going to use, just for simplicity and for these lessons, this is going to be my palette generally. I won't mix off script, off scene. One of my favorite brushes is a skipper, but some of these were my oil painting brushes. Grumbacher, uh, Robert Simmons, you name it. So the, the important thing is when you're using acrylics, which is what I'm using, to clean them really, really well. Um, get all the paint out or they become hard and you can't do anything with them. Um, this is a pig hair brush and it holds a lot of paint. So I'm gonna do that. I'll set my other brushes down. And I'm gonna grab, oh, I'm feeling, I love red. So I'm gonna put some red on here too. So I've got some white, I've got some red. So um, what you'll notice about me, and <clears throat> often I'm painting on the floor. If I can figure out how to video that, I'll do that. But what I wanna show, we've got some red. We've got a tad red I'm going to put over here. And I'll clean up my area later. And I have a cerulean blue. What I want to show a little bit is, and this may become, and probably will become, an underpainting at some point, but how I just dampened my brush with what I do, and I have a rag here. You know, we all have old... Um, old washcloth. Um, I have some that are definitely rattier and much more used. Squeeze a lot of the water out, but I want you to just start playing. See what this will do. I may turn it into a face as we work, but the main thing I like to do at the beginning is to cover my canvas. See, I love some of this kind of purple, deep purple color here. Now I'm going to grab, oh, oh, I have an orange. I've got an Azink white. I've got a cerulean blue, and I've got black. So I'm going to pull black closer. I guess there's, I think I'm going to use that at some point. Now, <clears throat> a little bit more white. I often have it down here as well when I'm putting stuff on. So that's why I tend to sit on the floor and do that. So I'll move this a little bit closer just so you can see how rich and all the colors you can get from mixing yourself. So what I want, just don't be afraid to do it. And if you actually come up with colors, this is how you can get some texture in them. If you find some colors you love, mix them separately and maybe even write down the colors you've made or make enough if you think you want to use it on a painting. So sometimes, so this is just to see the richness you can get of the abstract. <clears throat> so at this point, I don't have a real idea in mind of what this will be. Sometimes I like to really activate 
my, my base, the undercarriage of my paintings. And it frees me up in wonderful ways so that now I'm going to put some black on and we're going to just put it right on the, the brush. So please don't be afraid of anything. What, what can you mess up, right? We get it. I now have a separate wardrobe for my, uh, my paintings. And I have outside the door, I'll show you at some point, I have a mannequin outside my studio door. She kind of stands and I also have a dressmaker dummy. And they have my smock, which I don't have on today, and some of my, my, my jeans that I paint in there and a set of slippers so I can change into it because I want to be free to be messy. So whatever space you have, as I said before, try to just give yourself a space to do that. Now I'm not going to talk for a little bit and I'm just going to have fun on here. And that's what you should be doing too. So... You see, I put it on in no order, but I, I love moving paint, mixing paint. So I hope you do too. Just gonna grab paper towel. So I usually keep paper towels around, a little bucket of water, and then even if I don't get the lids on here right now, I'll clean them up and fix them up off camera. And the light gets back on here. And just to show you, I often have multiple brushes so that I can have a clean brush to go into some areas if I want to do something and make some texture in here. So even if I paint over it later, And then I can wipe it on me. So I become my own apron sometimes. Often, especially on an easel when I'm working, see how different it looks on the side. So I'll often, because I don't want to ignore any side or leave anything undone, and I'm not speeding this up. <clears throat> like so many artists do. What I'm trying to do for this session is to cover the canvas, have some kind of connectedness and shapes that are interesting. Skip Lawrence, if anybody's ever studied with him, he used to quote Edgar Whitney that he got to study with. Um, Edgar Whitney was the father of American watercolor. And when I painted and was doing watercolor with Skip, he used to say, and I thought these words have stayed with me forever, as Edgar Whitney said, create a shape and then entertain me in the shape. So I've taken that further in that I think it's a responsibility of an artist to not, if someone's spending time looking at your work, let's honor their time by putting our best work forward. Um, I'm actually liking this, but we'll see how it works out. And if uh, I paint over it in the future, which I often do. But right now I'm going to take a tiny bit of this white out of here and just keep a quieter space kind of off and around the edges and see what happens. I don't want the 
to be too boring. And then as you turn it, I always turn. Even when I do figurative work, I'm always turning and looking at my painting from all sides. Because very often, <clears throat> and I still fall prey to this, the bottoms can be not quite boring because we ignore them. You know, we put all our attention other places or at eye level. Don't. Don't ignore a space if you can. I love painting and it feels so good to get back doing this. So I think what is coming out in this one is one of my favorite sub-series I do, which I have not shown yet, is called my Freedom Ride series. Um, and I'll explain that another time, but this is feeling very much like that. And now because I'm liking that, I'm going to put a little bit more right up in here, scoot it right on, remember, nowhere does it say must add water or must use a palette first to mix. I did it on my hair and I put it on here. Probably not the safest thing to do with acrylics, but I've done it my, my entire life and I love the tactile qualities of it. So in this shape, I'm trying to make it different. It's got the little bit of border, but I want some of this glow in here. What I'm trying to do is entertain myself at this point, and I think that's the most important thing. The um, ethics of painting, I guess, but um, if we're bored, then guess what? Our, our audience will be bored. If we're joyful, they should find joy in our work. So you think you're ready? I'm going to stop here for now because I've probably gone over my 10 or 15 minute mark and I'll have to scooch my paints over to sit here. But I want to thank you for your time today. I hope, however, I hope that this helped you face your fears, get back to the drawing board or painting board or sculpting board, whatever you do. Please do it with joy and do it with no fear. You do it for yourself and in it you'll find that hope that we all need now. But joy and creativity and an honest work with your own voice. Thanks for coming. This is Elaine Weiner-Reed in the studio, unscripted. Thanks. Bye.